Okay, well, why don't we, we um, go through the attendance and then we'll see how many folks we've got. Uh, Alexa Anderson? Present. Court Booth? Present. Heather Bout? Here, hi. Frank Cannon? Don't see Frank. You see him? I don't see him. I don't see him. Um, Peter Fischelis? Yes, here. Thank you. Don Grelio? Uh, let's see. Lori Hunter? Lori's probably distracted. Uh, Matt Johnson? Uh, Pat Nelson? I'm here. Chris Popov, yeah. Charlie Parker, yes. Matt Root, here. And Steven Stachewski, here. Okay, great. I think we're good. One, two, three, nine. We have nine. Okay, we're good to go. Um, so I call this meeting of the Concord Middle School Building Committee to order at uh, seven thirty-three a.m. on Friday, January thirteenth. Um, correspondence. Okay, sorry. I'm on it. I can easily find it too, Heather. Can you, yeah, sorry. I am not totally with it today and I don't have it all collected yet like I usually do. That's I am good. so sorry. Good. Um, okay. Um, Wait a second. I... Sorry, what was our last meeting? Well, I know at least one bit of correspondence that we've got. Yep, we've got one, two. Initially, I have a two. Um, my fold, actually, there's something wrong with my folder, which is why I can't see them. Uh, I know we've had the, the basically a public records request for um, all of the emails related to the gym and auditorium, and then a couple of follow-ups to that, which Pat has graciously taken care of for all of us. Yeah, and we have had some requests for things like yard signs, which aren't for us, but that's really it. Okay, I thought that was it. Sorry, yeah. I can't access my normal folder for some reason. It just won't show. I apologize. I'm not. So just, just to say a few words about correspondence. Um, when we were receiving... Um, emails about the gym and the auditorium. I did my best to respond to people, to, to thank them for, for their input. And I kept all of that in a folder in my Outlook. And in that folder is not a scientifically arranged folder, but I think that we, you know, probably, we got it, I, I believe in excess of 50, 50 emails that I could kind of find in my folder. Um, going forward, we may want to be um, have some kind of other system. Um, we're not because we're not a town office. We don't have a, a system for holding on to um, emails for these kinds of, of requests. But we've done our best, and I sent out what I had um, with with those emails. Just wanted to inform the committee. All right, um, communication update. Um, um, do you want me to give it, Heather? Are you all right? Sure, that'd be awesome, Alexa. Sure. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so we have been off to the races with forums and coffees, and they have been, um, to say the least, spectacularly well attended, um, with some exceptions. Um, it seems like the larger community coffees have just been, again, really well attended. Pat and what and Heather, yesterday, we're at the Council on Aging. The day before, Pat and I were at the Fowler Library. And Monday evening, we had a an online forum. Um, and people have come with excellent questions. And it I, again, I can't I can't explain enough, I think, how valuable these are um, for getting word out to the community. So I appreciate um everybody who's helped get them get them done and be there in person and online to present them because I do think the community is grateful. And that's really it. Yeah, so uh, Alexa, can you just, do you have in front of you the number of forums and copies that we've held um, 
I, I will go through my own calendar. Um, <laughs> we have held, we held, let's see, one, we held about at least four, two. Um, in November, we did take, and one in, um, two, three, um, did we have one week of vacation? We held, I believe it was four in the month of November slash early December. And then we've had, we will have had another four, um, larger community forums in the month of January. And in addition, um, we have been invited to some PTG meetings. Those are the meetings generally that are not particularly well attended. You know, we get maybe two, three, four constituents there. Plus the Council on Aging one, which I don't think was in our, our original, which was not in our that's, original list. That's I think in the form. It, okay. It might yeah. be filed in January, but yeah. And does that also include the, the League of Women Voters and um, those meetings? Nope. Yeah. So that would be, it looks like then we're five and five, five yeah. in November. So we've had 10 forums in, in two months. So. A lot. Yeah. Um, and I just want to point out that when Alexis says we were invited to a couple PTGs, she has been, she has been everywhere all the time at so many coffees um, and is covering most of the PTGs for us. And I also want to thank Steve Soshesky because although nobody would because he's not on the communications committee officially, he has been helping us at several of these, and it has been a huge help to have the construction expertise at some of these. Um, so just just huge thanks. And Pat and Don have been all over the place at these two. I mean, the amount of time everybody is putting into them. Um, and I want to say I want to thank all of all four of those people for covering for me for the last couple of weeks because I did not make it to many. So huge appreciation. Amazing team. Well, oh, thank you, Heather. Um, I just I want to comment that this was part of our charge was to communicate with the community, and I think that we can say um, that we've done that. Um, and uh, thanks to Heather and Al Alexa for organizing that. Okay, um, OPM update. You're on Hill. All right, thank you, Pat. So. Um, just a reminder, today's meeting, we were focusing in on the, the estimate results primarily, but we wanted to give an update on the pre-qual process. Um, and we do have a, another planned meeting on the 26th um, for our normal monthly cadence for these for these meetings um, for, for other topics. Um, so quick update on pre-qual. We are about 50% complete with the scorecards. Um, we've met the pre-qual committee uh, has met um, five times to date. Uh, we've got two more uh, meetings, um, actually three, three because one we added one today, and um, we need to go through the remainder of the scorecards. Uh, the process is going really well. Um, we're making good progress. Ultimately, we want to get um, everything scored and finalized on the 23rd so that we can issue a, a final uh, report and recommendation on the 24th um, and then review that with the committee on the 26th for uh, acceptance. Um, and once it's accepted, we will um, you know, transmit that to the central register, uh, post it at town hall and then start um, notifying vendors of uh, their status, whether they're pre-qualified or not pre-qualified. -pre so uh, again, process is going well, and uh, it'll be wrapping up here uh, by the end of the month. Any any questions? Okay. Uh, so I'll move into the estimate review. And uh, you should have gotten everything uh, that we're going to look at today in your packet yesterday. Ian, Steve's hand is up. Oh, yeah, Steve's hand, yeah. I wasn't quick enough to get my hand up, sorry. Does the prequal include the general contractor as well as all the subcontractors? It does, yes. Okay, great. Yep. That was a question on the comments. Thank you. Yep. Uh, um, if, if I might, 
uh, Ian, note that some of us are restricted to our phones. So okay. uh, my, my ability to see the documents is pretty limited. So if you can help us there, thank you. Yeah, I'll try and call out num numbers and things that we're looking at on the screen then. So thank you. Uh, so I'm flipping at, at this point, uh, just want to present all the 90% CD cost estimate information. Um, we got the estimates in on Monday of this week. We had an all-day reconciliation on Tuesday, um, finalized the numbers uh, over the course of, of this week and, and was able to um, come to reconciled values. Um, so the first sheet uh, at this point, everyone should be familiar with. Um, this is our reconciliation sheet. It has uh, all of the numbers the breakdown yeah. from PMC. Yeah, it's on. Can I interrupt for a second? If everyone yep. can please mute who's not talking, I'd appreciate it. There seems to be a lot of background noise today. Thank you, Don. Um, so we've got all of PMNC's uh, values and uh, breakdown in uh, this column here. We've got AM Fogarty's in this column here. And uh, the reconciled value is on the left uh, in, in the green, uh, highlighted in green. Um, and it's essentially an average of the two numbers. This is how we've, we've done it on all the previous estimates. Um, and then we have a delta for each, uh, for each category here, uh, the difference between PM and C and AM Fogarty. And so, you know, the, the, the goal in reconciliation is making sure that, that they're on the same page with, with scope and assumptions. Um, but there is some, some variance there with unit prices and how they arrived at the cost. So we're, uh, you know, it's something that's acceptable um, in the industry. So uh, just walking through this, it basically goes from, you know, foundations and, uh, you know, steel uh, substructure um, into the enclosure and roofing uh, to button up the buildings, and then it gets into the interior. So um, for the for the substructure, the variance was sixty nine thousand um, dollars. There's some some variance with the shell of the building uh, between the two estimates of, of two hundred thirty one thousand. Um, the interiors had a variance of three three sixty nine three hundred sixty nine thousand, um, and then we get into the the services, the elevators, uh, plumbing, HVAC, fire protection, electrical, um, had a variance in ninety two thousand. Um, equipment and furnishings, which are fixed fixed furnishings, things attached to the building, had a variance of fifty nine thousand. Um, Special construction, um, which is the building demo and the the abatement, um, those had a variance of one hundred twenty three thousand. Uh, we had site work, uh, which is all the site preparation improvements, all the utilities, all the site electrical things of that nature, had a variance of two hundred twenty six thousand. Um, so, side by side, uh, we subtotal. Um, basically all the trade work and uh, AM Fogarty was at uh, 77.8 million. Uh, PMNC was at 76.9 million. And then we, we kind of worked through the markups. So uh, some of the, the markups uh, that we worked through were escalation, which we're carrying at this point, 1% escalation because we are, uh, nearing bid time, we're, we're a couple months out. Um, we're going to be going out to bid in March and receiving bids in April. So uh, we're right there. So we thought that 1% was uh, the right value to carry. It's in the tune of seven, $780,000. Um, the design and estimating contingency is also at, at 1% uh, for the remainder of the design details, uh, essentially. And that's in the tune of seven hundred and eighty thousand as well, because uh, it's off of the same same uh, subtotals. And then we have uh, 
other markups such as general uh, or well, other other things to factor in general conditions for the main building. They're carrying the same as they carried on previous estimates, 20 months uh, at a certain rate, $2.7 million. Um, general conditions for the site and demo, which is seven months at 455,000, they both carry the same. Uh, general requirements are, um, you know, pretty much neck and neck and neck at at two percent. Um, bonds uh, were one percent of the value of the subtotal. Insurance is one percent. Overhead and profit is two and a half percent. So when you get down to the bottom line, um, AM Fogarty was at eighty seven point nine million, uh, which is six hundred and sixteen uh, dollars per square foot. And PMNC was at 86.9 million, which is $609 per square foot. Um, and then taking the average, we landed at 87.4 million at $613 a square foot. Um, ultimately, there's a there's a, <clears throat> a variance of 989,000, which is acceptable um, for estimating. And so uh, 87.4 is, is really where we sit from a construction estimate standpoint. So um, moving to the comparison, we wanna show you how that compares to the 60% estimate. Um, and we can you know, maybe skip some of the, some of the details and how, how they compared here, but um, you know, bottom line, there's, there was a variance of 964,000 dollars um so the the uh <clears throat> the estimate was higher this time um which would would uh you know factor in you know the current current construction costs uh or or estimated construction costs a snapshot in time um with the escalation and markup so um slightly slightly higher than where we wanted to be but um, certainly, we're still still in um, good shape when you fit things into the bigger picture here. So, any any questions so far? And I just ask again that people mute when they join. We're getting feedback. Ian, can we set it up? You guys set this up, right? That people are muted when they join. Is that possible? <clears throat> it's distracting yeah, when me, people join and they get do. their background noise. So. Um, if that can be edited in the recurring meeting, that would be appreciated. Um, I Dawn? actually have a question. Yes, Court. You, uh, you first. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask about um, the estimate. Did you have something different or? No, same, but I'll follow oh, you. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Ian, I just want to make a few points. They estimated basically fresh off of the 90% uh, document, correct? That's right. That's right. Okay. And if I'm doing my math right, they're just over 1% differential. So just for folks that aren't in the industry, that's pretty, um, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like one, one, two, uh, one percent, just over one. Um, and I had one other question, but I might have lost track of it with the distracting background noise. So go ahead, Court. And Pat, I guess it's okay to call on court, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, go ahead, court. So if we uh, see that the new warrant article prevails, we have just an excess of $110 million uh, for the project. With these numbers in front of you, Ian, have you looked at what our current uh, uh, headroom is between 90% actual and the possible 110? And then a second question, when you add uh, the included contingencies in there, what then is our headroom at the present time? Yep. Yeah, let me, um, I've got two more, two more slides here and that will address your questions. Thank you. Yep. So the next, the next snapshot that I wanted to show, we, we looked at a cost analysis for bid scenarios. Um, I think a couple meetings back. Um, and so we looked at the 60% estimate and the, the construction cost associated with that, which is 86 million. 
we looked at the current warrant article and the, I should say the maximum acceptable bid amounts, um, which is 87.6 million. Um, we looked at utilizing the bid contingency and the maximum acceptable bid amount at 89.7 million. And then we looked at, you know, at that time we had a different value for, for deduct alts um, at 1.8. We've got those estimated out again, but um, utilizing the bid contingency, contingency plus the deduct alts got us to 91.5 million for a maximum acceptable bid on bid day and still being in the clear, being able to proceed with the job. So um, where we land now with the current 90% estimate, we're at 87.4 million. So we're we're a shade under, um, you know, the, the current warrant article value. So um, as as we are estimated today with, with the current estimate, um, we, we would not have to use bid contingency, uh, we would be in the clear for um, for uh, proceeding with the project. So, um, and that's if the if the bids come in, you know, 87.6 or less. So we're at 87.4, so we're, we're, we're right there. And then um, just projecting that out to, uh, to show you the difference uh, or the, the, the value, um, in comparison to the $110 million, uh, we've done this this side by side for the uh, the budget and where we where we left off in January of last year, which is 102.8 um, at the design development estimate uh, and the the completion of the value management exercise, we were at 106.4 in September. Uh, November, we got the 60% estimate. We did a little more value management there um, and arrived at 108.6 million uh, at that time frame for uh, estimated cost. And that was November 2022. And now we have the most current information, which is our 90% estimate. And uh, that translates to 109.7 million. Um, so that's, and that all of these numbers have the bid contingency embedded in them. Um, so that 109.7 includes the $2 million bid contingency. So there's, you know, in just to recap in the construction estimate number, the 87.4, we have escalation and design and estimating contingency. So there's, there are contingencies baked into that number. Um, <clears throat> we have, 5% contingency for hard costs uh, in there as well at 4.3 million. We have 5% contingency for soft costs at 761,000. Um, and then we have another 2 million in contingency for, for the bid contingency. So um, as, it, as it sits now, we are estimating that the project will be within the 110 million. Uh, it will be, uh, and, and you, you hopefully will not have to use the bid contingency uh, given where we're at with the estimating process. So that's kind of the, the big picture recap. <clears throat> Thank you, Ian. Um, yep. This is indeed uh, good news. Um, so at least escalation hasn't gone way up. Um, it, it would have been nice if it had gone way down, but um, our inflation hadn't gone way up. Um, are there questions, comments from our committee? Uh, Pat, can I make a comment? Sure, go ahead, Peter. Um, for those of you who aren't looking at this, I think Ian did a really good job of re recapping it. Um, but just to give you an overall flavor flavor for the industry and what happens on these bid estimates, and I think Lorraine would probably back this up, but the the 110 million, which now is a little under 110, includes an estimate of 87 million for the construction. This is what the estimators, Hill, everyone who's done this expects 
the the bid would come in at the construction bids which are going to come in so there's 87 87 4 right Ian okay so if the when those bids come in and, and the estimators have said and this is a very standard process that we've gone through many 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 times we're comfortable right now is what we're saying we we've estimated it at 87 4 if the bid comes in at 87 4 okay that means that in the next three months, we have used the 2% that's in there for design contingency and inflation. If you don't use, if those aren't necessary, then you're gonna pick up that money. So that's number one. So there's what, a million, um, million six there, Ian? Did I get that right? About, right? So, so the 87.4 includes a million six of design contingency and inflation, which is which it should. Okay, so you get the number. If the bid comes in there, you are you have a decision to make on the two million. That's all. So it's it's two million dollars that you when the bids come in, it it you 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 can knock that money off of the um off the number. So what we're really at here, Ian. If you take the bid contingency out, which isn't something we carry on on all projects, and I think it's been a really good. It's really good that we're carrying it here. We're really at one hundred and seven something, right? Yeah, yeah. If you if you take out the bid contingency, we're at one hundred one hundred seven point seven. Right. So basically, there. What what I guess I guess what I wanted to comment is that the one hundred seven point seven is where we are. We are really pushing for. That's the that's the number, and that's what would be an estimate without a big contingency. So that's all, thanks. Yep. Yeah, good point. I'm not seeing any hands up from the committee. And I don't know if you're on a phone and you can't show your hand, you can just speak up. Um, oh, hi, Matt. Um, Hello. Matt, glad to see uh you. I so I just wanted to say that, uh, of course, while I would have hoped for a lower number, this number is, uh, you know, great. It's within the limit ever so slightly. And um, that it also simplifies, I think, the strategy for special town meeting, because it's clear that there, our motion under the article will be for the 7.2 million. I mean, we, you know, it couldn't be closer to the actual limit without being over the limit practically so um you know I, I i hope that the committee agrees but that uh you know at this stage uh the warren article uh looks to be appropriate um you know for the amount of the budget at the 90 percent level and that we would move uh this 7.2 uh, million of additional spending in order to ensure that you know we have a project here. Thanks, Pat. Heather. Thanks. Well, first I'll comment on Matt's comment because I completely agree 100%. Um, so thank you for bringing that up, Matt. I think it's very clear we have to move the whole 7.2 in case we need it. Um, I also wanted to thank Peter for that comment because it's really helpful to to break it out that way and understand that the. The bidding contingency is in this, so hopefully it were, we're at 107 something. Um, and it also made me think just about overall contingency. I know that we've built a lot in, which I'm very thankful for right now. Um, and I think the total is up at what close to seven million or so. But Ian, could you could you remind us of our total contingency that we have built into the project, if that's easy to do? Yeah. Yeah, you're at uh, five million for uh, the seventy series contingency okay. for hard and soft costs. Okay, okay, there five, we go. Five point one, and then another two for bid. So okay, good. Seven point one million, and then you know, te technically, there's some, uh, you know, escalation and design and estimate uh, contingency in here as well. So another one point four. One point four in that okay. value. Awesome. Thank you. I couldn't see all the little numbers. 8, 8. That's helpful. 5. Yep.
and all, all this is standard you know this is this is what we would carry on on any job and what we would recommend carrying with with the exception of the big contingency that's something that you know as a as a committee <clears throat> we discussed and and deliberated on and made the decision to to carry that above and beyond the other contingencies that we typically have given given the volatility of the market and the things going on <laughs> right now so so Ian, just to clarify for me, with all of these contingencies, um, probably the one that's most, because we're so close to the bid, well, the, any amount of money could be taken out of the cost of the project within that 7 million of all these bid contingencies. Could, we could end up with a $105 million project or depending on on whether or not we use the contingencies do i understand that correctly well yeah i mean it's it, it all depends on where the bids fall so yeah. if if the bids fall below you know 87.4 let's say the bids come in under what our estimate is then there's there's a savings there right and then there's an immediate but i'm thinking just the, with the contingency on the bid, con, on the bid contingency so yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't use all of the the estimated value, and you wouldn't use the bid contingency. Um, but the the other contingencies, the on construction and owners contingency, we would carry those throughout the project. And those those are for unforeseen conditions, uh, things that come up during construction. So we we would never recommend taking those contingencies away. Right now, but but, but at the end of the day, there's still possibilities of savings there is yeah i mean when you get towards the end of the job and um there's unused contingencies all that money goes back to the owner so there are there are opportunities um you know if you if you don't have discovered conditions you don't have a lot of change orders then you'll be in a place to save more potentially yes okay all right, thank you, Steve. I see your hand up and Charlie, and then I see Parashar's hand up, but I want to go through the committee first and then, then we'll get to you, Parashar. So, my, Steve? Thanks, Pat. My only like concern would be that this discussion has said the word contingency a lot, and I want to just reiterate something that uh, Ian did say just now is that the owner's contingency, the construction contingency of $5 million, absolutely need to stay in the project throughout the project. And we should not anticipate taking any of that savings back until at least 50% of the way through the project. The risk right now, that's why they're there. There's risk on construction projects and they need to stay in the project. The only, you know, you know, extra contingency is that $2 million bid contingency, which we've all talked about. Um, and so, the subtotal just above that 107 is kind of like like the hill folks have just said uh is like the project the anticipated project cost 107 <clears throat> and so i just there's not a lot of contingency in this like what this is a public project this is the standard contingencies 107 7. um and i i wouldn't like the the thought that there's extra in that 107 7 number Yes, and I, I certainly didn't um, intend to convey the no. thought that we would remove any of those contingencies. Those absolutely have to stay till the till we know we can. Um, but it's just it helps me think about how variable things could possibly be. Uh, Charlie, you're on mute, Charlie. This question is about the bid contingency, which is clear, you know, I'm certainly separate from the baked in contingency. So for the bid contingency, assuming we don't need that 2 million, I, I wanna understand how we ensure that that 2 million goes back to the town and doesn't get consumed in this project. I wonder what the mechanisms are for doing that. We don't need to answer that question now, but I think we should should deal with that question so that that 2 million or, or part of it doesn't get sucked into uh, uh, post um, uh, post bid requirements. We just wouldn't borrow it, Charlie. It wouldn't be part of the bond that we borrow. We still have ninety million of that one hundred two to borrow. So we have time to adjust the the borrowing amount uh, based on the the, uh, uh, the the bidding time frame. 
I'd certainly defer to Bob from the town um, on financials, but my understanding is we've only borrowed 12 million to date. So there's still 90 um, left from what was approved a year ago to borrow. So I would assume if we don't need it, and we'll know in a couple months if this moves forward, that we just wouldn't borrow that. Good. Yeah. And, and that's, from a, that's the question. From a project budget standpoint and, and how we track project budget, we, we would at that point after the bid, if you didn't need that two million, then uh, we we track budgets based off of what you guys um, approve. So right now our budget is, you know, 102.8 plus the plus the 1.5 up front that was spent on on feasibility and schematic. You know, this this value here is is, uh, you know, would be changed potentially at the town meeting next week. So then we would track to that number and then you would vote one more time after the bids come in. If you want to reduce, reduce the budget, take the two million out, we would we wouldn't uh, do that change mechanically that way. Matt. I just wanted to note that the 2 million bid contingency by town meeting vote will go back to the town if it's not needed to meet the bid. So that's already provided for. It can't be adjusted. Yep. Are there any other committee members with comments or questions? Then I'm going to open this up for public comment and Parshar. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the clarity of, of what's happened. I had a question on the previous slide, and then I had one other general question. Um, I understood the first three this scenarios. Can you explain the last one where uh, the utilization bid construction plus the deduct alternates and what the 91.5 million maximum bid amount kind of mechanically means for this? Yeah. Yeah. So th this shows a scenario in which um, you have a bid that comes in over, over the estimate or the construction budget estimate and, and the bid contingency. So it's above 89.7 million. So, you know, say it comes in at 90, 90 million, 91 million. You know, at that point, you would have to utilize your deduct alternates. And so the committee deliberated on that. We have a list of deduct alternates in the tune of, you know, I, you know, I think we're at close to 2 million now for deduct alternates. So we, we would order those and use those um, to cover that bid overrun. Okay, that. thank you for confirming. I thought that was yep. the case. So there's yep. plenty exactly. of wiggle room there, basically. Yep. Um, and then the last, the second question is, uh, related to the previous item on the agenda, how many qualifying bidders have been are in the process? In other words, like what's the, what's our sense of how competitive this bid may or may not be? And I recognize, you know, frankly, even with two com two bidders or two vendors, it could be competitive. But I'm just kind of curious what what's the number in terms of vendors that have gone through the, the pre qualification process? Thank you. Um, I want to say we're we have. 90 plus um, both G GC and subcontractors that, that have put in SOQs. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. Oh, yeah, we, have, he, we have five GC. Five yeah, I was GCs. gonna say, he shared that previously, the list and actually the names, and there were five GCs, yep, which I think go. is what your question is, Parker. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. And all known in the public bid construction world. So there were no surprises there. I have a follow-up on Parshar's question. Go ahead, Matt. Um, mechanically, that last scenario on the right, the, is it true that the bid would come in at the, let's say, the 91 million? Or would it instead come in at the 89.7, but the deduct alternates would have been taken? I just no. don't know which. No, of so the bid, the bid number that the GCs will put on their form, the base bid number, if it, it comes in above ninety, they'll they'll plug in what that base bid is, and then on the bid form, there's there's going to be lines below that that says, but deduct this amount for X and deduct that amount for Y, 
and then right. the committee but technically decides, we cannot accept a bid of above the 89 okay. point something nope not true what do you mean because, because you we don't have it. that much money we don't have 91 million so that's that's what what ian is saying is if you took your alternates so if the bid that right so we take the alternates to get it below the 90 be forced right. to take but the form, so we don't the, we will never spend 91 million on the building see what i mean correct that's correct. that's just what i wanted to clarify yes but the bid on the form could come in above it that's what we're stra that's what we're talking about it's a it's a um process matt that the actual bid will read the base number and then it's almost like a menu of the four alternates and we'll decide that number or that order um i think at the next meeting but the idea is that then you you know if you are above what is it 91 or 90 the, eight, the 89.7 yeah. yeah if you're above that then you could in theory say we don't have enough money we are going to accept bid alternate deduct alternate number one or maybe you need to go to one and two or maybe you need to go one two three and four to get us under that 89. so that's what they're explaining here thank you um wilson kerr i see your hand up yeah um I'm a, I've got no power, so I'm on my phone, but I have, I have two questions. The first is how the bids are presented, and I think the industry people will know right away, and this is to Matt's question he just asked. If there is a menu that they can choose from for deduct alts, um, is it common industry knowledge that that is obviously not preferred, that anyone who starts dipping into the deduct alts to say, well, we can't do it for this, so let's start knocking off this and we'll deliver a project that is within the budget technically, but it doesn't have playing fields or it doesn't have this. Um, I would assume that that it's common knowledge that that would be not preferred. I mean, you don't want people saying, oh, sweet, we can get the whole amount we need, but we just won't deliver the following. So that's question number one. And maybe that's just obvious, but it's not obvious if you haven't gone through it. Question number two is once the, the bids are received, are these not to exceed bids? Uh, I mean, and my question is on the $2 million contingency for the bids it obviously kicks right back to the town which is what matt said which is fantastic because mm -hmm. two million's right back uh but then there's the other you know whatever it is five built in or is that designed to be used during the process if they you know discover a big piece of bedrock under the site if they there's an indian burial mound or native american burial mound i mean what is what is the reason after we get the hard bid that that we would touch that two million uh, because if we don't need to touch it and it's a perfect scenario, we could be building this school for, you know, 103. Um, so, uh, I, I, those are my two questions. Thank you. I hope that's clear. Yep. So to, to an, answer the first question, which was surrounding the, the desire to utilize deduct alts, you know, I think it's something that we, you know, you, you, you don't want to do typically, um, that's kind of the last safety net in place for a potential bid overrun above and beyond what the bid contingency is. So I would also add in that the strategy for deduct as opposed to additive is intentional. Yeah. So, you know, the bidders know if we have add alternates, it's well, this is the project we want, but if we can afford it, we'd love to have X, Y, and Z as well, as opposed to this is the project we want, we really don't want to take away X, Y, and Z. So it is actually a different strategy entirely. So the bidders, when you do deduct alternates, they do understand that they don't, you don't want to take this out of the project. And depending on if you have to take an alternate or not, it can change who your low bidder is. So for, for the bidders, it is really important that they price the job efficiently and effectively first time. Yeah. And then the second question, was that the, it isn't that the bids that are provided are not to exceed. However, unforeseen changes, you know, things that occur during construction would utilize the construction contingency, the 5% construction contingency. But the bidding contingency is purely for that initial bid number. So if it is not needed to maintain the initial bid number, it does not get used and only the construction contingency, the 5% gets used for those unforeseen, you know, hitting a piece of bedrock or anything like that during construction. 
Okay, so that's a great answer to the question. Sorry, I just had one follow up. In your experience, and, and maybe this is for Don and Stephen and others, how many times does that 5% uh, sort of on site contingency get used? And I think this sort of harkens back to what Matt was asking. Because if it's 90% of the time it all gets used up, um, you know, then we're at whatever it is uh, 107 versus 110, which is still great. We're still well under. But if it always gets used, uh, is, is there some way to not have it be used by tightening things up is, is what I'm asking or thank you. Every project's different, Wilson, to answer your question, since you said uh, it, um, Lori mentioned at the high school, their contingency was not, they still had quite a bit left. And then they found mercury as they were demoing the old building and it, you know, they had to use contingency money to uh, remediate that. So and that was in know, another district, just so everyone's clear. Oh, I'm sorry, Lori. Hi. Yeah. That was another district. But, I, but I it's a good example. We were yeah. under budget in Duxbury. We opened the building under budget, thought we were like proud as peacocks, and then demo, they found mercury in the gym floor. And we had it, we all, we burnt through all the contingency with the toxic cleanup. So you just never know. Yeah, and we, and we had unexpected abatement at the high school demo too. Yeah, typically once you're out of the ground and once you take your old building down, if there's one to be taken, those are the big unknowns. But there's also things in the documents that maybe you needed and didn't realize, or maybe the owner sometimes, and that comes out of owner contingency often. But look, like I have a project where they've spent 1% of their contingency. And that's just an example. So every project's different. I, it, there's no way to... to <laughs> Uh, Dory, can you please mute? <laughs> um, so anyway, every project's different. It's hard to put a blanket on there. Um, but you know, if we're if we do our best to make good construction uh, decisions, you know, and things that we deem important and are cognizant of what's left, then you know, then you you don't always have to spend it all. It's, it's and I think if you need it. I think one clarification is that contingency is not part of the bid you receive from the GC. So whatever is not spent remains with the town. So that is that is not the contractor's bid. It's not included in their price. They don't get to keep any of that savings. They don't. That's not their money. Lorraine, do they see that? I mean, I again, this is back to some I mean, questions. This is Matt's public been asked. information, right? So they could log on and see, but that mm -hmm. that's not how they work. I mean, that's not how public construction is. They don't look at it and say, oh, great, that's a lovely pot of money I'm going to take from. At least not the contractors that we always work with and not the ones who've submitted for prequel. So it's not, sorry, this is just one more follow-up. And I'm, I know this is the rosy scenario and it's great to talk about the non-rosy ones, but if we don't need the bid contingency and, and the estimates are dead on, um, we're at 105, essentially. If we discover nothing wrong, um, with with anything, if, if if the entire materials goes exactly perfectly, there's no mercury discovered. Everything is perfect. Then aren't we at a, a hundred million for the whole project all in? And I know that is very unlikely to happen. And it's important to have it. And it's important to say that we will need it even if we don't. But there is a scenario where that happens. Is that is that is that number accurate? No, I think so. Just the starting point. When you when you're not using the two million, you're you start at one oh seven point seven, so that would that would be the the first. Oh, I'm sorry, I was two good, million off. Good I'm, scenario. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was more like yep. one oh three. You're back to one oh three in a perfect scenario. That that's right. I was yep. off of that. Yep. Thank and you. And then if you don't if you don't utilize the the construction contingency, the full value or the owner's contingency, the full value, you've got five million dollars worth of play there. So the the lowest well. The, the lowest you could go is 5 million less, but that's a very unlikely scenario. You know, there's, there's always use of, there's always things that come up during construction. Got it. All right. Thank you. Yep. Are there any other questions from the public or comments from the committee? Um, so I'll move on to next steps. Um, and uh, it's my understanding that we would be looking at our next meeting on January 26th at our deduct alternates and ordering them, putting Correct. them in order. 
Okay, so when we don't, Lorraine, we don't need to do that now. Just want to confirm that. No, but at the next meeting we do. Yeah, at the next meeting we will need to do yeah. that. Yeah, we'd have we'd have two big things on the agenda for the next meeting is the, the prequal report and acceptance of that, and then the ordering of the um, the deduct alts. Okay, if by January twenty sixth the town has not passed Article five, we'll have another really big item on the agenda. Um, so uh, I I think that's it. Um, is there any new business or anybody, have I missed anything? Um, otherwise, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Um, so I will. But I, I cannot remember, do I do a roll call for this motion to adjourn or no, do I just have to adjourn the meeting? Okay. All right. I'm adjourning the meeting.